In this video, we're going to be talking about what's called the washer method. So we have some other different situations that we have or finding volumes and rotating around axes and things like that is we have a piece that gets cut out. And so we have to basically kind of think of it as the old donut type of a thing. And the donut idea was um, we had a circle and we wanted to find the area kind of within it. So we found the area of the bigger shape and we subtracted out the area of the smaller shape. It's exactly the same concept that we're gonna do here is we're gonna find the volume of the bigger shape and subtract out the volume of what we're cutting out, right? And so we're gonna get these kind of unique looking shapes with holes in them that are not perfect cylinders or you know they have curves and who knows what types of different situations you got. So to go about doing this is very similar to finding the area between curves is we need to figure out kind of what equations on the top what equations on the bottom? Because the equation on the top is creating a larger radius, so a larger volume, and we're going to subtract away the smaller radius, which is subtracting away the smaller volume. All right, and notice that they're squared, because remember that when you find the volume of the cylinders that we're creating as we roll it around, it is the area of the base times the height, and our bases are circles. Right, and so there's our pi r squared kind of thing. That's the height, the thicknesses. So uh, outer calculus. So here's kind of how I organize it. So we have um, we have that their formula, and then I'm going to consider this a big R minus a small r. Right, that's kind of how I'm going to look at it. So let's go to a problem. So first thing is uh, we're going to find the volume of the solid in the first quadrant. All right, key piece of information, first quadrant generated by rotating around the x-axis. So x-axis is, we're going to leave everything in terms of x's, and we're bounded by this information, which is in terms of x's. Great. So what I don't know is the bounds. I get that we're in the first quadrant, but let's graph these and figure out where we're at. And so if I look at this, this graph is, if I'm graphing a cubic, um, and I go out one, and I cube root it, um, that is gonna give me a one, but I really kind of need to know where they cross each other because you have this cubic that um, has this kind of a look to it. And then you have this linear that has this kind of a look to it. So it's kind of, that's what I need. I know they're gonna cross at zero because when I plug in zero and I plug in zero, I'm getting zero. So there's one intersection. But where is it that the cube root of x is equivalent to that equation. So if we solve it, we get an x value of 8. All right, so if I cube root 8, I get a 2. And if I plug in 8 here and take a fourth of it, I get a 2. So basically, I, I can do the math. I can do it graphically. I can do it algebraically. But we're going to get an 8, which means our volume, our pi r squared height is going to be based on us going from 0 to 8 pi. And what we have is we have this larger radius and the big R is going to be dictated by this equation because it is on top. So cube root of x and the little r right is going to be smaller so it's going to be one fourth of x. So we're going to do the cube root of x squared. So big radius minus small radius squared and then dx. So there's our setup. So let's clean up our stuff so we can do the calc on it. So take the pi out always. We're going from zero to eight. And this would be a one third power, then I'm multiplying by two. So we're looking at an x to the two thirds. And then minus, if I square the one fourth, I get a 16th x squared. And that is what I'm going to do the antiderivative of. So um, let's keep the pi here. If we add a power, we're going to have add three over three, which is five over three. Dividing by that is multiplying by its reciprocal. And then minus, this would be an x to the third. 
that we're going to be dividing by a 3, which is multiplying by a third, which would make a 48 next to the 3. And we're going to go from uh, 0 to 8. So we're going to be plugging this in. So let's do some math here. We have a pi. We have a 3 fifths that we are taking an 8 to the 5 thirds. Minus 1 over 48 times 8 to the third. All right, and so bracket on it. So that's the 8 plugged in. When we plug in 0, we would just be subtracting 0 out of it. All right, so let's do math. Uh, on this 8, we're going to cube root it and then raise it to the fifth power. So cube rooting it gets us a 2. And then two to the fifth is going to be 1632. So three fifths times 32 minus eight to the third is 512. So 512 over 48. And this whole thing is going to be multiplied by pi. So let's keep going. And then um, if I simplify this out, this ends up, or I multiply that together, I'm going to get a 96 fifths. If I simplify that, that becomes a 32 thirds. And then I need a common denominator out of that. So... I'm going to multiply this by 3, which is going to get us a 288 over 15. Multiply this by 5 is going to be 160 over 15. And if I subtract my 288 minus my 160, and then we'll tack the pi on, we'll get 128 pi over 15, and that does not simplify. So that is our volume of this shape being rotated around the x-axis, right? And it kind of creates a big Pac-Man looking thing. I don't know. Um, but that volume, that little sliver all the way around would kind of create that, all right? So that was doing a washer method where um, you have to find a big radius and subtract out a small radius. But other than that, the math is still the same.